I am going to demonstrate for you how I create my Vortex digital art. To start with, you need to come up with an image you think will work. In this case, we're going to start with this one coming out of my Aperture database, looking down through the Brooklyn Bridge to the deck below with some brightly colored taxis. I thought this would be a good place to start. So, we're going to open this in Photoshop and crop it square because since we're going to twist these and turn them into something that's centric, we need a square image to start with. So this has been cropped with the taxis to one side to create more drama in the image. And now we'll process this. Now your, your choices when you're trying to create something like this are to pick an image that has parallel lines, large definable objects, and hopefully some bright colors to make it interesting. And this has all those characteristics. So this is where we start. A word of advice when you start working with these, if you're going to produce anything that's bigger than about 20 inches printed, you probably want to adjust the overall size of it before you do any work on it. Gigapixel AI is a great product from Topaz Labs. There's Perfect Resize, Super Resolution, any number of other products that will do what we call pixel padding, make the image larger before you start working on it. In this case, that's, that's already been done. The first thing you want to do is save as a new file. Before you start working on anything, making major changes, save a new version of it, and when you're done, you can delete the in-between versions to save space if you want, but you want to save all the steps along the way in case something goes wrong, or you change your mind. The first thing we're going to do with this is to duplicate the layer. So this is a Mac. On a PC, it'll be a little different, but you go to Layer, Duplicate Layer. You can take the default name or create a new one. And now we have a copy of this to work on. Under Filters in Photoshop, there are a lot of options. We're going to explore the Distort Selections first. You will note all the options in here. You can have Displace, Pinch, Polar Coordinates, Ripple, Shear, Spherize, Twirl, Wave, and Zigzag. They all do different, unusual ways of distorting an image. So, Pick what you like, but we're going to start with polar coordinates. You don't have any options with this. It simply does what it does. But the first thing you want to do when you're working on these is change your zoom to 6% so you can see the entire image and what it's really going to look like when you're done. And this will give you an idea of whether you want to proceed with this or not. And we're just going to do it and take a look at it. And this is the result, which is pretty interesting, actually. It looks like uh, a distorted taxi cab is racing up the side of a tunnel. Now that we've got this, here's what we want to do next. We're going to duplicate the layer again. So layer, duplicate layer, take the settings. And then we're going to take this layer and we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. You could do Vertical, you could just rotate it, you could do whatever you want. But for our purposes, we're going to flip it horizontally. And now we're going to change the Blend Mode. So over here in your Layers panel, you look at the Blending Mode. And every one of these has a different effect. It's changing the way this layer relates to the layer below it. And what we're going to do, because I like the effect, is make it difference. And you see what we get. Now, if you like it like this, you're done. You can change the exposure on both layers. If we change the exposure on this, go to Image and Adjustments, and exposure, brightness, contrast, levels, vibrance, hue, saturation. They all make a huge difference when applied correctly. But if we go to exposure, 
and just increase the exposure a little bit. It brightens it up a lot. And my approach is always to increase the exposure on each layer by the same amount. And currently we're at 0.92. You can also adjust the offset, which produces some really interesting results. Depends on what you want. Always remember where you started. Just hit zero and go back to zero. Although on gamma correction, it starts at one. Just remember that. So we've got 0.92. And you can turn the preview off and see what you got as a result of doing that. If you like it, keep it and go change the other one to the same amount or maybe less depending on what it looks like. So, image, adjustments, exposure, make it 0.92, which is the same as the other one. And you get this effect. It's very contrasty. The other thing I frequently do is adjust the, uh, the color settings, saturation and hue. This is what you get. I'm going to use a keystroke on this, which in, on an Apple is Command-U. It's probably Control-U or Alt-U on a PC and adjust the saturation up. You can go too far with anything. This is a great example. But you bring the saturation up to, uh, let's see, 34 at this point, and check the preview. You can increase it enough to make it interesting, but not too crazy. So keep that number in mind, 34. The same thing with this one. And we can shift the hue on just one layer at a time and you'll see how the colors change on both since we're showing the difference on the top layer between it and the bottom layer. As you change the hue on any layer, it affects both layers now. And as far as I'm concerned with this one, we're done. I like the results and I think I'll keep it. You may not want to. Now we're going to go back to our original image and we're going to try the twirl distortion tool. So select the layer you want to work on. Whatever layer you clicked on is what you're going to be working on. And since the eye is not turned on with this one, it's not visible and you can't make any changes to it. This one is the original. The eye is visible and you can make changes to it. So now we will go to filter, distort, twirl. This is the twirl filter. Once again, you want to zoom out. Starts at 100% every time. You want to go to 6% so you can really see what you're looking at. It shows you the whole image. How much you twirl this has a lot to do with the final result. We are currently at 360. As you twist this, you will see what you're going to get out of the image. And what you need to remember is what's in the middle is what we're going to duplicate when we get done with this. And we're going to flip it horizontal so we have a mirror image. So we're going to stay with 360. And you can try any number of different settings just to see what you like. But just for the sake of demonstration, we'll start with 360. You can see that this spins right to this center section here in the middle. And when we duplicate this, the other side will do the same thing in reverse. So we're now going to duplicate the layer. You can change the names of these if you want to make it easier to figure out what you're doing. Now, once again, we'll go to Edit, Transform, and in this case, we want to flip horizontal so we get a mirror image. And again, we can change the blending. And you just see what you get as you change the blending. I'm particularly fond of the color burn setting and hard light or pin light is really dramatic. A lot of contrast in these, but that's not what I want to use at the moment. I want difference. Now you see what I mean by busy. The more you twist it, the busier it gets, but I really like this effect. I find it interesting. And again, if you like it, you're done. Now, I would like to jack up the levels on this a little bit. I think I'm going to leave the uh, exposure where it is, but I do want to increase 
the saturation on this. So we're going to start with a bottom layer. And I don't know if that's enough yet. Let's try this. A little bit on the fluorescent side. That's 52. So we're going to keep that, and we're going to change this one to 52 as well. And there you have the final product with this particular technique. If you like it, you're done. You can also make these diamond shaped. So to get this effect, you merge the final two layers so you're working with one image now. Go to the layers section and merge the selected layers. Now we have a single image that's processed in our design. Now we're going to rotate this and arbitrary to get minus 45 degrees. And this is what we get. Now what you do is crop it in one to one ratio. Select the crop tool, select one to one. Scroll up and drag this with the shift key held down so it stays symmetrical. Drag the two diagonal corners up to just within the boundaries of this image. Now, now you see what I mean by losing over 50% of your image is gone, but what you get is a diamond shape. And now to see it, we rotate it back. And make it 45 degrees back. Then you get this effect. Now when you're printing them, you don't have to rotate it, but to visualize it, and show it to someone, you need to rotate it. I always do a drop shadow on these just to give it a little reference. So layer, style, drop shadow, and the default is fine for this resolution. You may need more if you've made it bigger. But this is what it looks like in a diamond shape. I prefer the square version in this one. We lose a lot of it, but it's just a completely different look. And that's how I create these. Now, your mileage may vary. You may want to do something completely different. But this is a good place to start. So now go create your own digital art. Show me what you create.